welcome back to Life Skills. Uh, we're sure excited. I think in about a week from now, we're going to start back live, and that'll be uh, exciting. We can actually see your faces and hear your stories. But for now, we're going to continue with these uh, video recorded uh, messages. And today we're talking again. We've done this before about nutrition and you know diet and that type of stuff. And that really does make a big difference. You know, if you don't put the right kind of fuel in your car, it can't run. You know, if you don't uh, use the right kind of oil and machines, <laughs> they will seize up. And so the same thing with us. You know, if we don't put the right kind of fuel in our bodies and take care of ourselves the way we're supposed to, we're just not going to operate. And if we don't think well, we can't do a good job and those type of things. So we're going to really encourage you to pay attention to what we're going to be sharing and, and to work on your own and what your what type of food you're, you're eating and, and what, what that's going to do to you in the long run. You know, one of the problems I've had as uh, running a food pantry for years and years through a church is the type of food that we get that is provided and donated by government. And sometimes it's really not the foods that we really need to be eating. Um, you know, a, a diet of a macaroni and cheese might taste good for a while, but it's really not going to do much for us in the long run. So we encourage you to pay attention to these type of things and make the best choices you can and eat the best kind of food you can and, and see what, what it does for you in the long run. And uh, we care about you and we'll see you soon. Hi guys, my name is Charlotte. I am a nutritionist here in Southern Oregon and today I'm going to be talking to you about some of the basic concepts around nutrition. Um, let's be honest, the world of nutrition is very complicated. It feels like there's new information coming out every day, new diets, new dietary recommendations. So I really want to help you guys focus on some of the basics, particularly blood sugar. So first um, we want to ask ourselves, what does healthy eating look like? How can I eat in a way that's going to support my optimal health, so my best health? And then how can I eat in a way that's also going to support my energy, my mood, my immune system, and that blood sugar that we're going to talk about? So first and foremost, I really want to talk about blood sugar or what you might also hear called glucose. So what is blood sugar? Um, blood sugar is truly sugar circulating in your bloodstream at any given time. So let's say I eat a meal, my body's going to break that down into blood sugar or glucose, and my blood sugar is going to spike. I'm going to have all this blood sugar circulating in my bloodstream. So let's start with the morning here. Let's say I woke up, hypothetically have not eaten anything since dinner the night before. My blood sugar is going to be very low. So let's say I have this for breakfast. We have eight ounces of orange juice, two pancakes, some maple syrup, and then coffee with sugar in it. And while that sounds like a delicious breakfast and is fine in moderation, majority of what we're getting from that is sugar and simple carbohydrates. Simple carbohydrates from the pancakes and lots of sugar from the maple syrup, the sugar in our coffee, and then the sugar in that orange juice. So I eat that in the morning, my blood sugar is very low, and all of a sudden my blood sugar is going to spike because my body breaks that down very quickly. So I go from very low blood sugar to very high blood sugar. And this takes my body from a sort of relaxed state to a very stressful state. And a couple things are going to happen here when we have high blood sugar. First off, we are going to see lots of insulin be released. So insulin is that hormone we hear about with diabetes, right? Insulin's number one job is to help the body clear out blood sugar. So my blood sugar spikes, my pancreas is going to release that insulin, and that insulin is going to tell my body we need to clear the sugar out. And there are a couple ways that my body does that. Um, first, it can store that blood sugar or glucose in my muscle cells. It can also store it in my liver cells and then in my fat cells. But unfortunately, my muscle cells and my liver cells can only hold so much blood sugar at any given time. So the majority of my blood sugar is going to be stored as fat in my fat cells. And unfortunately, the potential for that storage is pretty much unlimited. So that's where we see people really struggling with weight loss, struggling to get rid of those pounds, right? And also gaining weight. So high blood sugar, we're gonna see lots of insulin released. We're gonna see a lot of fat storage. We also will oftentimes see mood swings, so a little bit of crankiness, right? And then difficulty concentrating. So maybe I'm at work or I'm at school. I'm just not probably gonna be able to focus as well. My mind might be racing. My thoughts might be all over the place. And then what's going to happen, right? What goes up must come down. So I'm going to go from very high blood sugar, probably pretty quickly, to very low blood sugar. And so I have that crash, and that low blood sugar is another stressful state. So I go from one stressful state, high blood sugar, to another stressful state, low blood sugar. And with that low blood sugar, we're going to see a couple of things as well. First, we're going to see a lot of cortisol being released. Um, cortisol is that stress hormone, very important in certain situations. 
but we definitely don't want it released in chronic amounts or constantly being released. So when we are in low blood sugar, our body's gonna release a lot of cortisol. Cortisol, unfortunately, in high amounts has been linked to numerous health conditions, particularly inflammation in the body. Um, so we wanna watch out for that. Another thing with low blood sugar is that we're gonna see a sudden hunger, right? That sudden ravenous hunger where we just need something. I'll reach for whatever I can grab, but I need to eat. Um, oftentimes, again, we're gonna see that crankiness, that hangriness we hear about, and then also difficulty concentrating again, just like with high blood sugar. So this is the blood sugar roller coaster. Really, really easy to get trapped on it. I wake up in the morning, eat a not super balanced breakfast, spike my blood sugar pretty soon after I crash, super hungry all of a sudden, probably gonna reach for something that's not the best and get right back on that blood sugar roller coaster. So what we wanna shoot for instead is this balanced blood sugar, which we can see is a lot smoother, a lot steadier. I like to call it the blood sugar gondola ride because it's very smooth, right? A few turns here and there, but overall it's very consistent. So let's look at this breakfast. This is what we, we, we would consider a more balanced breakfast. So here I have water, hydration, very important, right? Particularly when you first wake up. Um, we have an egg on there, great source of protein, great source of healthy fat. We've got half of an avocado, again, excellent source of fat, vitamins, minerals, particularly potassium. We're also gonna have um, a slice of whole grain toast. So there's a carb on your plate, right? But whole grain is gonna give you what we would consider a more complex carbohydrate. I'm gonna break it down a little bit slower, particularly when I pair it with that fat and protein from the egg and the avocado. Then I have some strawberries on there, about a half a cup. Great way to get more fiber, vitamins, minerals, and also get that sweet sensation. I have a sweet tooth, I love fruit. Um, and then I have coffee on here with some whole milk in it, two tablespoons. Again, providing me with a little bit of fat, gonna slow down that, that breakdown, slow down that blood sugar spike. So rather than seeing that sudden spike, we're gonna see a much steadier and more gradual climb in our blood sugar. And that should hold us over through the morning, right? Our energy levels should be pretty stable. Lunchtime rolls around, we get that natural hunger sensation, hopefully reach for something pretty balanced, and that carries us on through the afternoon and into dinner, right? So we really want that stable energy, that smooth blood sugar. And what we'll see here is a couple of things with balanced blood sugar. We're gonna see adequate amounts of insulin being released, not too much, not too little. We're also going to see decreased fat storage. We don't have a ton of blood sugar that we need to store, right? We'll also see steady mood, so not that hangriness, that crankiness, and concentration is going to be a lot better too. We'll be able to focus a little bit more. So what we're trying to go from is this to this, right? Our balanced blood sugar. And the best way to do that is to look at what is on our plate, right? What are we putting into our body? So this graph is a really nice breakdown of what a well-balanced plate should look like. So you can see here, half of the plate is reserved for vegetables. Again, we've talked about this and we'll talk about it a little bit more, but great source of fiber, vitamins, minerals, it's gonna help keep me full longer. I have a quarter of the plate here reserved for protein. We'll talk about this a little bit more too, but use your palm as a really good tool for measuring out a portion of protein. And then we have a portion for healthy fats, we have a portion for healthy carbohydrates, and a portion for some healthy fruit options. Um, fruit, again, great way to get that sweet sensation and uh, satisfy that sweet tooth. So things to focus on, lean protein, whole grains, fibrous vegetables, and then some healthier fat options. Let's break this down a little bit more. So here I have some info on vegetables. I really encourage you to focus on a wide range of colors. That's gonna provide us with what we call phytonutrients. They are the chemical compounds in vegetables and fruit that have some of the best health benefits. So shoot for lots of different colors. You're gonna get lots of different phytonutrients that way. I also really encourage you to go for fibrous vegetables. That fiber, like I said, is gonna help with that satiety, keeping you full longer. And it's also gonna help with regularity in terms of going to the bathroom, which we can all appreciate. Um, so some top fibrous vegetables to go for, broccoli, carrots, leafy greens, think kale, spinach, artichokes are wonderful. Um, we have asparagus on there, squash, all great choices, all excellent sources of fiber. Next, we have our protein, right? I mentioned using your palm as a tool for protein. Shoot for about four to six ounces because let's be real, I can go to a grocery store, get a chicken breast that's like this big. Might seem like a great deal, but it's not really a single serving. So focus on that four to six ounce serving. 
Um, protein's really important because it provides us with what are called the essential amino acids. So I eat protein, my body breaks it down into those amino acids. They're kind of considered the building blocks of the body. Essential amino acids are amino acids that I cannot produce in my body, so I have to get them through my diet. So again, a really important reason to incorporate healthy, lean protein with your meals, and I also really encourage you to incorporate them into your snacks too, right? They're going to help keep us full longer and keep those energy levels good. So protein for snacks is really important. And then if you're a vegetarian, you choose to not eat meat, dairy products, you can still get your protein. Um, I encourage you to focus on what we would call complete proteins. So potatoes actually are considered complete proteins. They contain all the essential aminos. Quinoa, great source of uh, those essential amino acids. And then the other thing you can do is what's called food combining. So maybe I take something like brown rice and I pair it with a legume, so black beans. That pairing is considered a complete protein. All the essential amino acids are in there. So even if you're vegetarian, even if you're vegan, you can still get that quality protein. Next, we have our healthy fats, right? So fat really has been villainized for a while, but we found that there are actually a lot of health benefits around fat. I definitely encourage you to watch your consumption or minimize your consumption of trans fats and hydrogenated vegetable oils. Those are primarily found in baked goods, fried foods, um, ready-made foods, think like potato chips, convenience foods like that. So just watch that consumption. But other than that, fats, again, very important, particularly for vitamin absorption. We have what are called the fat-soluble vitamins. Those vitamins need fat to be absorbed properly. So if you think about it from that standpoint, we really need healthy fat in the diet. And then again, fat is very good for healthy energy levels and that satiety, that fullness. So some good choices are going to be things like butter, coconut oil. I love avocado or avocado oil as well. Um, cream, eggs, and then we have olive oil on there as well. So some really good choices, and let's be honest, they make things taste better too. So healthy fats. This is an interesting graph to look at. It just looks at the obesity trends over the last several decades. Um, what you can see here is that in the late 1970s, the low-fat dietary guidelines were introduced, and we were encouraged to really stay away from fat, go for low-fat, fat-free foods. But what this graph is showing is that contrary to what they probably thought was going to happen, those low-fat dietary guidelines were introduced and the obesity continued to climb in the United States. So rather than seeing a decrease in obesity with less fat consumption, we've seen an increase. So maybe pointing the finger at fat wasn't quite the right thing. So just an interesting thing to point out. Then we have carbohydrates on here. So I'm not an advocate for no carbs. Carbs are an important part of our diet. They give us important energy, all kinds of good stuff. Um, but I do encourage you to focus on whole grains or more complex carbohydrates. They take a little bit longer to break down and they won't spike that blood sugar as much. Um, Again, carbohydrates are a great way to meet additional calorie needs. So if you're someone who's really active, you're on your feet all day long, or you're an athlete, your calorie needs might be a little bit higher. Carbohydrates are a great way to get some of those extra calories in. Again, just focus on some of those whole grain choices. Rather than white rice, go for brown rice. Rather than white bread, go for whole grain bread. Simple switches like that. So those are our carbohydrates. And then what about supplements? So the question is always, right, should I take a supplement? I think supplements have a real, have a time and place here and there, but I think there are three core ones that I would recommend for most people. First being a multivitamin. Multivitamin is just a great way to fill in any nutritional gaps. I think vitamin D is a wonderful supplement to have as well. Um, vitamin D we typically get from the sun, but most of us aren't outside enough. We wear clothing, right? We're just not outside long enough to get all the vitamin D we need. So supplementing can be a great thing to do. And then the B vitamins as well. Particularly, again, if you're vegetarian or vegan, you're probably not getting a lot of the B vitamins, primarily found in meat. Um, so supplementing with the B vitamins can be a really smart thing to do, and they're great for energy production. So those B vitamins are going to help you feel good all day long. And that's what I have for you guys today. So I hope what you took away is just some of those basic concepts, focusing on what a balanced plate looks like. That healthy vegetable portion, that good protein, some fat, some carbohydrates, and maybe some fruit on there, right? That's going to provide us with optimal energy, optimal nutrition, and we're going to feel our best that way. Thank you. So wasn't that a great section on nutrition by Charlotte Fisher? She's awesome. 
Um, we love having her in to our peer support training and uh, anytime we can get her to come and talk to us because nutrition is really important and you know it's something that we we think about when we've gained a few pounds and we think oh I should eat a little better but really good nutrition is is an everyday thing right um, along with drinking water and you know eating veggies and um, having health insurance. I know uh, there's a fair amount of people out there who don't have health insurance who probably do qualify for the Oregon Health Plan. So if that's you and you think that you might qualify, give us a call because we have people who can assist you in getting signed up. Uh, but once you are signed up, do you have a primary care doctor? That's really important to get those preventative things done each year. Um, having a dentist, again, the, the preventative stuff is usually paid for if you have uh, insurance. I know for a while I had, I had no dental insurance. I, was, I had OHP and I didn't have dental. Uh, this was a long time ago when they didn't include it. And I got a policy for like 35 bucks a month and it, it kept me at least able to go to the dentist. So things like that are really important. And especially if you have children, make sure that there's a lot of things out there uh, for keeping kids healthy. Um, through o OHP, you can get uh, coverage for your children, even if you don't qualify. So those are some things to check into. Um, it's really important right now, especially to stay as healthy as we can. And we were just talking about uh, you know, COVID and how you know, right now there's a vaccine available and not everybody chooses to take it and that's fine. Um, it's, it's really your choice. But if you do choose to take it, and I just did, and I was sick for a day or a day and a half um, after the second one. And it wasn't fun, but I do feel a little bit better about being able to uh, go see my family members who are also uh, being very cautious because we have some folks who have, um, you know, vulnerabilities. They're, they have some health issues. And so really it's all about keeping those folks safe. You know, we might not be worried if we get it, but it's about keeping uh, like my 83 year old mom who has lung issues. I wanna keep her safe. So that's why we're doing all we can. And, and I hope that you are too. Uh, we're still wearing masks. It's it's what we're doing right now, and we hope that even though it's it's tiresome sometimes, um, make sure that you do that uh, because it does help. Um, I know some people think it doesn't, but it, it helps. It helps a little bit at least. Okay, so anyway, that's a lot of stuff, but um, yeah, nutrition is, you know, taking reasonable uh, action to eat healthy is going to be a really good thing for your life. So uh, again, we're at the end of our life skills video. This is the last one, the last week that we'll have just a video. So starting next week, we will have life skills and you should have got a letter by now. And if you didn't, it's on its way. Uh, next week on the third, the apartments and the houses are going to come to the Methodist church. If you need a ride, you have to call your case manager, or call the office and let us know. Um, that you need a ride and we'll pick you up. Um, we'll have child care, so you have to let us know how many kids you have coming and what ages. Uh, but it'll be from six to seven at the Methodist Church. Week one is for the apartments and houses. Week two is for Hope Village and Kelly Shelter. Um, Kelly Shelter, you folks are close enough to walk, so um, you're gonna get some exercise along with it. Um, and then weeks three and four, we will have uh, a video on those weeks. If there's a week five in a month, we won't have anything at all. So that's kind of the schedule going forward. We're gonna try this for a few months and see how it works. Uh, by then we might have uh, the ability to go back to weekly life skills with everybody there. We don't know. So we're gonna do what we can to get you guys back together again. Uh, make sure you have a mask and that you wear it. Uh, we will be distanced at the church, so we'll be safe. And we're gonna do some awesome cleaning before and after and keep just keep everybody safe. All right, so that's it for this week. 
as always, we love you. We care about you. And we will see you live next week.